good morning junior high so this project that I'm gonna have you work on is dealing with what we call functional sculpture so this is gonna be both for my seventh and eighth grade art kids this fourth quarter because you can always get better practice at your skills at working with clay even if it's hand building even if you don't have a wheel so all of you should have a four pound chunk of clay just like I have here and it should be pretty wet yet but not so wet that it looks like mud some of the other things that you might need for this because each one of these projects that you make is probably going to look different the goal is functional sculpture can we make something that serves a purpose other than just being looked at so can it hold something keys candy jewelry a candle do you cut holes in it so candlelight can come out or do you want it watertight so you can put cereal in it and eat out of it later so i have a couple of sketches here um, just with some ideas and some joinery that I'm going to be showing you guys. And I think I'm going to go with some sort of notched uh, bowl shape just because that is not super difficult, but not as easy as let's say something that's wrapped. But I will try depending on time, and there's a kitty here, I will try depending on time to show you some different techniques for those of you that might want to try certain things. And Nimbus is going to join the party again because, well, you know, that's what Siamese do. So some of the things that you might need would be a rag because I understand when you picked up your clay, that's all you got was a four pound chunk of clay. You have no clay tools that you would have in the art room. So look around your house, ask if it's okay to use some of this stuff, and we're going to get as creative as possible scrounging around for what we have. So here I have an old t-shirt that I just ripped part of it off as a rag because we might need that to smooth things over. I do have just a cleaning sponge. I may use this if I do. It's probably going to be the softer side, not the scrubby side, but that's what I have. I might need a knife and a fork just for cutting things and scoring things, but a paper clip might also work well for scoring things too. Pencils are going to be great for drawing and curving into your clay, much better than something, let's say, like a paper clip. Remember, paper clip is kind of like a needle tool. It's great for scoring in super small areas, but not for carving. Focus, focus. Toothpicks, if you don't have a paper clip, and they might work out for something else too. If you've got a rolling pin, this is going to make life really easy. If you don't have a rolling pin, but you could get a hold of something like a wooden dowel or even something like a metal pipe, that might work out. If in case you don't have any of those, we can use these. We can use our hands. Uh, for some of what I'm going to do on my design, and this might change, it's just a rough idea, but I found some things around the house that I might use. Yes, it's very random, but whether they're gears or seashells or old broken Christmas ornaments, beads, keys, jewelry stuff, things that when you press them into the clay, uh, they might make neat designs. I also am going to be using an ice cream pail for the outline of my big bowl that I'm eventually going to notch out and make. If you're doing something like a slab, then you might go with a long skinny slab and then wrap it around something like a soda can. But remember, anytime you're wrapping something, if you have access to paper towel, always wrap it in paper towel, otherwise your clay is going to spot weld itself to the smooth surface of, in this case, your soda can. Okay. Lastly, if you do have access to corn starch, so if you look in your kitchen, if you're in the baking area or wherever you might keep your flour, if you have corn starch and you're able to use a little bit of it, go ahead and grab it. Uh, if you don't have corn starch but you have flour, that will work also. It's really fine, really powdery stuff, not meant for kitties. Holy cow, cat. <laughs> there we go. But that's going to come in handy for when you start pressing things into your clay to make neat details and make what's called low relief, meaning you're going to be able to feel all the dents and the bumps and the depressions that are going to be happening on the surface of your clay. Okay, so this is kind of what the layout looks like. Let's get started. Okay, Junior High, so now we are set up, and as I forgot to mention earlier, you may need something like a towel or a pillowcase. That is only if the surface that you're working on is shiny. So let's say you're doing this on your kitchen counter at home, and your kitchen counter is shiny. All of you have done clay in the past, and you know what happens when you need on shiny surfaces. Sometimes it sticks to it. So 
having a towel down or a pillowcase or something to help not make that surface so shiny. Something like having a towel down is going to help with having things less sticky. So what I have here is a piece of plywood, which some of you might have at home. This is just birch plywood and it's nice and smooth. Again, if you don't have that, use something like this, a towel or a pillowcase to help make that not so sticky. All right, junior high, so now that you've got your four pound chunk of clay, I needed it a little bit for each one of you, but I want you to need it a little bit more. I had a lot of these to prepare, so I did not go through and knead it thoroughly. So we're gonna do a little recap on kneading and the importance of kneading, and hopefully we won't get too much caviar in it because this kitty just needs to be in the shot all the time. One thing I did want to mention is you need a little bit of water and you might need an extra little container whether it's a bowl or a cup or what I'm using is the caps from laundry detergent bottles because I like to reuse a lot of stuff until I break it because I'm kind of a dirty hippie and I like going green that way. But this empty cup is going to be for slip. Now all slip is is clay that's really really wet. So I'm just going to take some of the clay off of my chunk here and it's going to take a while to turn into slip because it's already somewhat wet. Usually bone dry clay turns into slip much faster. It reconstitutes into slip much faster. We don't have bone dry clay. Remember all you had to start with was a four pound block. So then what I'm going to do is just add some water to this and let it sit while I'm working on my clay because after a while we can smoosh this, we can turn it into slip because you will be needing slip down the road. So now we're going to start kneading. Remember when you're kneading, it's easier to stand up and have your shoulders over top and all you're doing is pushing down and away and then peeling it back with your fingertips. Down and away, peeling it back. And remember, you have a four pound chunk of clay. So rule of thumb for people that are beginning clay people, beginning kneaders, about a minute per pound. If it feels like it's getting a little bit dry, maybe less than a minute per pound. 